Alan uh, Rosenblatt we're talking with on uh, Take Action News right now, uh, Dr. Digipol on Twitter. And Alan, uh, for Google Glass, people who are not familiar with it, how easy is it to use? Do you simply use your sort of uh, retina moving around to, to guide? I mean, what, what's, the, what's the experience like if, if you're wearing Google Glass? I, I believe it's just a matter of moving your eye around and, 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 uh, and, and it, uh, I don't know if it's a blink or if there's a... Uh, mm. You know, but it's 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 supposedly very simple to use and very straightforward. So, um, whether or not uh, you know, they've already you know, I've, I've read stories in the past of people who have you know quadriplegics uh, who have uh, they've experimented with uh, computer screens that can lack um, track the motion of the eye, and so that when you l look at the screen and be able to see a particular thing to click a link and you blink, it clicks it. And I know that mm. that's been, that they've already developed that a long time ago with regard to uh, just general software and hardware to help with uh, quadriplegics. And, uh, and I, uh, this has got to be, you know, an extension of that and uh, only going to become more and more sensitive. If you're interested, there's, there's a, a great book called Accelerando. I don't recall the author of it, but it's called Accelerando with an A-C-C-E-L. Uh, and uh, the first third of the book is about this guy, Max, who's wearing essentially what is Google Glass. Uh, and this book was written a good five, six, seven years ago. Uh, and, and he's wearing the glass, and he's constantly monitoring the, the web. And when he comes up with a really great idea based on what he sees, he uses the glasses to instantly patent the idea. And then he gives the idea away to people, his friends in various locations around the world. They make millions of dollars. He then is able to visit those locations and get comped completely, so he has absolutely no income. And the IRS is chasing him around the, the planet, trying to get him to pay back taxes. But he has no income on which to pay those back taxes with or for. <laughs> so uh, a very interesting uh, kind of foreshadowing of some of the uh, things that you can do with these glasses in that book. But I just really think that you know this is a revolutionizing search, um, set of technology because it just changes how we can use mobile video and mobile web technology to dramatically affect the things around us as we experience them. Well, and I agree 100 percent. I think this is a, this is earth shattering in terms of the implications for it. And I, I, you know, in terms of citizen journalism, the ability to go into fundraisers, or the ability to go into places where you're not really, you know, you're sort of discouraged from having recording devices or cameras. Now everything's on the record, which is as it should be. Do you have any right. privacy concerns though about this, such as you know people who may use this for nefarious purposes or or I don't know obscene purposes for that matter? Uh, yes, yes, yes. There's absolutely very much. Concern concerned about all of that, uh, you know, uh, you can take these, if people don't know what to look for in these glasses, and as I said, it's only a matter of time before they make them look like ordinary glasses, uh, it's only a matter of time before uh, uh, people are able to go anywhere and be able to record uh, or even live stream things as they happen. Uh, the thing about live streaming is a little trickier because if something is going out live, and somebody who's monitoring that event, like, for example, if there was a live stream of the 47% speech, uh, you know, increasingly we're going to have staff monitoring the web to make sure that nothing live is going out, they don't, they don't find anything live from their event, because if they find it live in the process, they could scan the audience and try to find the person and they get in trouble. So I mm -hmm. think uh, as far as the surreptitious stuff, a lot of it is going to be video and then distributed after the fact, which makes... Uh, the culprit impossible to find and uh, the impact impossible to avoid. Yeah, you wonder if we're going to start seeing, um, you know, suddenly recordings from locker rooms or, you know, places where people are changing outfits. I mean, they're all, you know, for, for people who are, you know, trying to collect that stuff, perhaps even illegally, this would be a huge potential device for them. And it, you know, puts a lot of people on notice that really nothing... I mean, if it's if, and again, as you point out, it'll be very hard to detect who's got these recording devices and who who doesn't. Alan Rosenblatt, Alan, the fascinating stuff as always. I'm going to go out and uh, get myself one of these uh, Google Glass devices and and report back to everybody on Take Action News what the experience is like. And Alan, maybe and I, you, maybe you and I will go snooping in some uh, political fundraiser with it. And we'll have some fun. Have a great weekend, Alan. Thanks as always. You too, David. Take care. Alan Rosenblatt, Dr. Digipol on Twitter. Be sure to follow him. He is a must-follow. Great stuff. And we'll, we'll have that report on Google Glass in the weeks ahead, I promise you. Up next, our activist of the week, and he's touching on the issue of immigration. Remember, 
Superman, he was an immigrant, an illegal immigrant. Storytelling, the art of storytelling and influencing public debate. Our activist of the week is next right here on Take Action News.